off season in stores right now. Hey, we yeah. we gonna be number one in the country as of Friday. I'm sure. I'm calling it. It's already done. And we it's do, already done. You know, it's 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 a cold world right now, man. We <laughs> it's, it's it's we got a lot coming. Every artist on our roster has bullets. Ari Lennox album sounds incredible. Ooh. Jid's album's incredible. Earth Gang albums albums incredible. Kaz, Loot, Boss, everybody. Let's, let's let's jump in, bro. So I mean, uh, one, thank you for for flying in and hit, hitting your boy up on a on a last minute. Definitely snuck in and <laughs> snuck in L.A. There's a lot of people that when they see this, they're gonna be mad because I I came to L.A. I ain't say nothing. But we ain't, gonna, we ain't gonna time stamp it. We won't let them know. Hey man, either way, I was here post pandemic and I just had to I just had to hit you, bro, because. I was just hitting you to come see you, and you know, there's there's a lot of beautiful things happening. I was like, let me come roll up on you, just say what up, yeah, yeah. and then it, it just turned into like an amazing random day, which is, which is great. LA day. <laughs> I, I I I I leave when I leave to get on a plane tonight. I leave inspired and and reinvigorated and just like, like literally like the I, I, I'm I'm fulfilled in this little two day trip. You know what I'm saying <laughs> to LA? Like it's crazy. You had a hell of a roster, though. I mean, and you guys are in a hell of a season right now. Um, Yo. And, and I think, so, one thing that that still kind of blows my mind, even though I've been in the industries of, of marketing and creative and, you know, when we met, you were leading, you know, advertising at major, you know, businesses. And um, it's really cool to see that now Dreamville, this, like, cultural icon, that there's, like, this creative department that you're heading. Mm-hmm. Right in this, it's it's an infrastructure and um, a machine that you guys are talking about. So like when you're as your title as creative director, right of Dreamville. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Recently, it's changed. Oh, vice president of creative services for Dreamville Ventures. Sorry, you know that. You know what? Hey, you know my what? bad, my bad. Cheers on that one. Look, Salute. Correct me. Yeah, yeah congratulations you know on that. There's so, been a lot of um. Yeah, so so even bigger. Yeah, so now e- even bigger. So, what is some of that work? Like, what is that? Well, right now, um, there's been like a major restructuring in the company over the past uh, year. Uh, we we've, we've um, turned the we've restructured the company into like several verticals, okay. and um, Dreamville is expanding into now really looking seriously at the playing field of what we're trying to do industry wise. So there's records, there's people and culture. There's creative services, which I, I am um, running. There's festival, there's apparel. Got it. And um, it's an amazing time because right now we're really looking at a place of like, you know, we've we've had meetings over all these years about what is Dreamville and people want to be in business with Dreamville. And now it's like, we're having like a really real look at the whole gamut of what the company is. So as, as being at the helm of creative services, I'm the in-between from a visual level visual space in contact with every different part of the company okay. so whatever partners we have from a creative standpoint i have a conversation so you're like the internal agency yes. of dreamville yes you run all of that so the the creative thread the vision the storytelling of the empire is what you are overseeing yes which is massive and phenomenal because it's a uh, man it's an organic community and like it's like beyond the business. Mm-hmm. Like now, you guys are like a, it's a full lifestyle. Like it's a way of way of life. So how would you describe Dreamville for anybody that doesn't doesn't know, right? Because we know we know J Cole, mm-hmm. which is one component of Dreamville, but it is many things. So how would you describe Dreamville? Honestly, I think Dreamville is the people, because like over like when Dreamville started, it was. It was literally the flag of like what J. Cole's sound represented. But over time, the message in his music ended up translating and becoming something for our audience. So like traveling the world and, and like meeting so many different people, it just became a place where like there were a lot of people who were familiar in like this this positive perspective of like, you know, I don't want to say like the everyday person, but I felt like, you know, the people that I met along the road. They, they were like people who like, you know, took care of their home, took care of their people and Damn. and just lived like, just just like a really cool, like laid back perspective of just being a person. Like we move in this industry, we're in the record industry, right? There's a lot of people that put on, right? Yeah. There's this flashiness. Yeah. 
and, and, and I like that stuff too. But one thing I always loved about us as a, as a unit was like that, that stuff is, can exist, but it doesn't have to take away from like the everyday just energy of like just meeting someone and just getting to know them, just like how we sit here as friends. Yeah. And I feel like that's, that's the commonality as what I feel like when I think about Dreamville as just like normal people who care about each other in like a different way. And it, it seems like it, it kind of has like a little cheese on it, but it, nah. that's, that's what I feel like when, yeah. I, when, I, when I, the people that I've, I've, I've met, the people that I work with are like just rich, like really family oriented, good people that I've, I've, I've met along this time. And even the people that we've worked with in present and in passing have just been people who have these stories of like, one, just trying to figure it out, just trying to make it. And they care about, you know, one, their legacy, where they came from, and like how they're trying to like pay it forward to the people yeah. that are coming. And that's one thing that I've always been proud about. And that's one thing I, I've always liked to rep. I feel like with hip hop, there's always been like people who are outside of our culture see hip hop to look a certain way. Like you think about like, even though these messages are always true, like, you know, like NWA is true. Um, uh, tribe is true and I think people like to see hip hop a specific way yeah. I feel like there's always been like this way where people thought hip hop was just this rough urban edgy like gangster yeah. perspective right you know what I'm saying like they think like you know like that's that's how you look at black people yeah. urban people like yeah. that's why people grab their purses and elevators things of that nature like no we, we regular people just like y'all yeah. like we got families we got friends we don't do shit we do regular shit we go to the mall. We we, we have fair. We we're, we're normal, and I feel like the 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 thing that I always loved about you know our our brand is like before you see the music and the the lights, the camera action, you see the people first through their content. Like when we've always done like our documentaries, our content pieces, you got to know the people first. It wasn't the gaudiness. You got to know. Yeah. You watch Cole and you, you got to know his story as who he is as a person, bar none. And and that's something I think we've learned from all of our artists. That's how we got to know them as people. And I think Dreamville represents people in such a strong way. I think that's why it's become such a thing that's vibrated for all this time. And I think that's why people gravitate to us. It's not the shiny shit. The shiny shit was cool, but I think people know, like, at the end of the day, most people ain't living the shit that we imagine on television, right? I, I think it's it's it's, it's crazy because it, it takes me to like how um, you know when when black people had ascended to you know aristocracy right in in kind of more colonial days or or in Europe they had the the really great black folks they had them take pictures without their shoes on hmm. and it was like to represent this like uh, ideal of like almost bestiality right and it's why some people were upset when um, LeBron James had that Vogue cover, I think it was, right? And he was like like a the King like Kong. A, like a King Kong, like a gorilla, right? And it's mm -hmm. like there's so much greatness within the culture, but to um make it where it doesn't make other people feel bad about their um let's just call it by being basic mm -hmm. sometimes. And and to justify the greatness, we've made it like, you know, these beasts, these animals, right? These um uh, it's like inhumane, mm -hmm. right? To justify the greatness, mm -hmm. so that the common person doesn't feel like, God, like why am I not great? And and I think what what you're describing is like part of that has been in hip hop. Like it's like there has to be so much struggle in the creative world and field, you know, and that's like the explanation for the greatness. Mm -hmm. And I think what was interesting for me when, when I first got exposed to J. Cole, so I've never even told you this story, but it was through my nephew. Uh -huh. <laughs> and he's, he's just a funny kid, man. Well, now he's not a kid. He's a grown-ass man. That's how long J. Cole's been been dominant. But that's where I got exposed. And it was, like, through his high school kids. And he went to high school with all these, like, you know, valley kids out in California. But he's like, yo, you got to get up on J. Cole. And seeing how they all related. And none of these kids had a struggle story. None of these kids were coming from these, like, New York boroughs, even though I know you're from Brooklyn. Mm. Uh, shout out to Brooklyn. Uh, they weren't from, like, inner city L.A., but they related. 
and they love. And what you just described is like this thread, this humanity of the culture. And I think what you guys have done in Dreamville was to illustrate the leadership, the, the influence of the culture without the kind of um, fascination with the abominable, right? This like yeah. crazy sense of drug dealing, shoot them up, blah, 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 gangster shit that, that we've gotten caught up on. And to me, that's why you guys have so much power. Yeah, and I, and I, and I feel like, and, and let, me, let me preface that I don't, you know, I don't discount that those things don't exist. I just, I just look at it from a place that like, there's, there's so many people that don't walk that path. You know, we, we wear that. Like the sad thing is you, you and I have worked in the corporate world all these years. And you know, we had to deal with that energy where people look at you like you are this because that's the narrative that's painted. Yeah. And I'd say 99% of people like you and I do not walk that path. So when someone comes along with a message that's like, yo, I am, I am, I am this person that is, is like, I don't want to say regular. I want to say he's just a person just like, just like you and I. Because I feel that way. You know what I'm saying? Most of us have the, the white picket fence. You got an amazing, beautiful family. Yeah. Most you of us. You know what I mean? I was raised with a beautiful family. Right? Like, we don't, it's not like we weren't out there like, my mom wasn't on crack. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and these, those are stories that people have. Mm-hmm. But there's also some of us that have great relationships with our dad. And, right? and, and, like, and, and, and I there's know struggle. the love you have with your father and your mom and your sisters and like, mm-hmm. dude, you got a beautiful family and this community. And, and there's and, lots of us like this. And there's struggle in that, but not the struggle that they want to paint us and just absolutely. And, and I feel like what what I appreciate is there's a way to even tell that in a way that humanizes our experiences. I feel like there was a point where like the way our caricatures were painted only demonized our experiences. Ooh. And I feel like hip hop has found a way over the years to, wow. to humanize our experiences. That's a, that's a hell of a line. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I feel like where we're going is something that our flag has, has waved pretty, pretty bravely. And I feel like it's only getting stronger with even all the current talent that we have and the talent that we'll have to come. And I feel like that's kind of what Dreamville represents. There's people that, you know, the stories that we, we've, the stories I've heard in my travels with people that I've met when we were on the show is people saying how much the music means to them. Yeah. And I'm like, bro, some of these people feel like people that I grew up with, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I feel like that's why the IP and the brand of Dreamville is so powerful because it represents something that, one, I think at one point it wasn't cool yeah. to acknowledge that that kind of person exists, even yeah. though you just know it in the back of your head. You know, yeah. we, we idolize these these grandiose images when you know most people aren't even that image yeah so i I mean look dreamville is dope um and i know we could talk about that a lot and 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 it's exciting because it's so multifaceted multi-layered but but so are you right so like you have a, a really just like fascinating story that i'm i'm privileged enough to have been around and interact with with your family. Um, what about your story, right? So, like, in within your journey, right? You've gone through college, right? You grew up in Brooklyn, right? All that. You you went to the ad agencies. Now you're, you know, leading this vision of this um, this empire of Dreamville. But then you also have worked with some amazing nonprofits and some of the things. So you have deeper motives. Talk a little bit about like your purpose and what's like driving you, even through all of this work. Because that, that sits in all of everything that you touch, how you operate, everything that I know about you, there's a thread. I just want you to share. I'll give you a funny story. Like, one thing I know, right? I'm, uh, cameras roll. I'm, I'm, I'm this, I'm a, I'm a small frame guy. I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. And one thing I realized about kids, probably in any inner city, I have a really soft spot for is like, I realized how easy it is to be on. Um, influenced into making, you know, one, a bad decision, or two, you know, being a victim to your environment, right? We come from places where there's a lack of resources, so it causes kind of like a war zone where you might be a vic. And the thing that makes me sad is because because of the lack of resources, there's a lack of opportunity for these kids to like really blossom and shine and become, you know, their full potential. So I was one of the kids that 
I look at myself as like a really lucky kid. I, you know, I'm a first generation American. My family's from the Caribbean. But in my, in my journey, I was a kid that, you know, I, I didn't really know what my path would be. I didn't grow up Silver Spoon. My family didn't really have a lot of money. You know, my dad did what he had to do. My mom did what she had to do to get me to where I'm at, I am. And we're sitting here. But I know 99% of the kids that grew up in situations that I grew up in will never be able to see the things that I've seen. they will never be able to travel to places I've traveled. And yeah, yeah. that's probably the deeply rooted reason why there's this thing inside of me, there's this loud noise but in the back of my head all day about having to want to help, yeah. you know? So I grew up in East Flatbush, Brooklyn. I went to like one of probably the worst <laughs> middle schools <laughs> at the time, you know, in Brooklyn. And I, I just knew at the time being like this little kid uh, that like I'm not gonna make it like I'm this this shit is not gonna work for me like yeah. I gotta figure something out yeah. like for real <laughs> and a dean that was uh, at the time really invested in me actually let me know like yo you I used to always get in trouble for drawing in class I would draw in class like not be paying attention I'm scribbling because I love comic books yeah. and she was like look you like to draw do you know that you could test into an art school I was like I, like what the fuck you mean I could yeah. Like there's a there's a school that you go to for art. I didn't fucking know that. Yeah. But she basically let me know and gave me these papers that I took home to my mom. Like yo, there's apparently, I don't have to go to the school in the area that I grew up in. I could take an art test. Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? And my mom wasn't with it. Yeah. My mom is a Jamaican woman, who's like art with the, f like how's art gonna? How you gonna make money? I'm gonna eat off yeah. art. You know what I'm saying? And shout out to my grand aunt that said to her like yo. That's all he knows. You need to let him at least try. So I took these art tests. I made this little, I tell the story all the time. I made this flunky trapper keeper that I'm dating myself, trapper keeper, <laughs> with some, some sketches, some crayon drawings, some uh, uh, color pencil drawings, some uh, charcoal drawings of my work. And I went and I took these art tests at these high schools and I got in the two in Manhattan. So then my world opened from East Flatbush to New York City. Wow. Now I'm taking a train to school. The world is bigger for me. I'm on a train every day going, yeah. going to the city. I'm seeing everything. And now my world is bigger than my block. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And that was like the first thing. And it's like that started like the, the, the beacon. Like, you know, they talk about the North Star. Like, yeah. you can find it's the way to navigate yourself. That was the first thing that kind of led me into this space of art. And that took me to high school where it was like, I got there and I was like damn I don't know if I want to draw comic books anymore and then I kind of lost my way for a while like not really wanting to care about color theory when I should have been even diving diving yeah, deeper yeah but my dad got me an internship in music so then I'm doing music after school doing street team stuff for Def Jam so this thing just kept leading me then I met my first mentor say Adams who ran the art department for Def Jam he's the one that made me go to art college Okay. Because he was just like, yeah, you want to do music, but like you don't even know what you want to do in music. I was like, yo, bro, don't you go to this art high school? Go to college for that. And that's what made me go to college for that. Come home, start a company with my friends. Yeah. Because he graduated from Art Studio Pittsburgh. We started, we started doing this through relationships to another friend. I'm working with Little X, who's Director X now, and I'm doing this <laughs> stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. art was like this thing in the background that saved my life. But back to your original question... I know that my shit is lightning in a fucking bottle. Yeah. For like kids in East Flatbush. Yeah. And even the time that I grew up in, there was no internet. Like, you know, I'm dating myself, but like, I couldn't learn how to use Photoshop on YouTube. It didn't yeah. even exist. Like the, the possibilities were so much more far, farther away from me as a kid where like there was no like, I couldn't DM an artist. Yeah. Like, here's my work. Look at my work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now there's this lottery of that that happens. Yeah. None of that shit existed. So me... My heart is really close to like, like some of these kids. It's like it's scary now because it, I hate that it's COVID, and I don't get to like on Saturdays. I'm always at um, mentoring. Um, I, I mentor with the Brooklyn Combine in Brooklyn, which is amazing. Group. Yeah, you know, great, great brothers that inspire me every day. But like, I think about like how crazy it is that like there's so many kids that just need somebody to be like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and. That's, that's what keeps calling me back because that's, I know like 
my shit is luck. Like for real, for real. As much as there's talent and I recognize some of the doors when they open and I yeah. jump through and I miss some when I didn't. Yeah. That shit's not fair. So like me, like yeah. like I have to like reach back. I gotta share my story. I gotta talk to some kids. But I think what was was so powerful about what you're saying is um and it's something I'm I'm very passionate about as well, it's the exposure piece. Mm -hmm. Right. And so what you were able to do is, is like you said, you expanded your world. It, it moved from your block. It moved from East Flatbush to Manhattan, which, you know, is this global, you know, thing, right? 200 uh, museums in New York City. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, it, 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 it opened your world up. And now, even with the work that you're doing with Dreamville, like, you are still pushing the message and the exposure with the global reach. And you're telling these stories, right? And you're exposing people to different things. Um, and that's something that, to your point, with the internet, with social media, right, and, and what we're able to do, we're able to expose people to different things. And I think your ability to inspire now um, and create more folks like you, or folks that just can get exposed to do whatever their thing is, right, that's bigger and better than both of us, I think is amazing. And the fact when I see what you do with these kids uh, with Brooklyn Combine, the story that jumps out to me, and I'll just jump to that one, right, before I even ramble. I think when you took them to the Nets game, mm -hmm. like, I was just smiling ear to ear. And I remember how excited you were about that one. So rather than me tell it, can you talk about what that event was and, and so, what you were able to do when you got them out there? So my, so my nephew's the biggest Kyrie Irving fan. <laughs> like, and shout out to my homegirl, Michelle. I'm in LA, I'll be back soon. I, I'm in and out. We're gonna pretend this wasn't even in LA. Yeah, it's, no, no. we're yeah. not even in LA, yeah, we yeah, are yeah. somewhere. Yeah. But um, <laughs> like, talking about a kid, like he's, he's literally like my clone, looks like me. And he has like a thing about him, like he has this um, shyness, but he's a brilliant kid. Yeah. And he deserves the world, like, right? So I, we we had this event with um with uh, uh Kyrie Irving does this uh this annual at the Barclays, and then I, I have a good friend named Mike Slade who's at Jordan Brand who 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 works in partnership with um with the event. You want, you want to pause or no? Okay, and um basically we 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 have this event where they have this thing. Mike gets me in the room. And I'm like, but Kyrie is over there. <laughs> this, for me, I know what it means in the world to meet someone that, that is larger than life because it makes it possible, right? Yep. So we get there and I'm like, wait a minute, Michelle, Kyrie. I'm hit Michelle, I'm like, yo, you here yet? She's like, no, no, no. So in me politicking with her, I get all the way to be right behind Kyrie just so Kamani could like have a conversation with him. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because, you know, me, I know like if with any kid, if they could see that something is even this possible, yeah. it makes it real for them. Like me going on a train as a kid for high school, I remember like running to the city all the time and being like, Yo, I'm in here at Thai Square, I'm running around in Chinatown, I'm in Central Park with my boys because, you know, I didn't go home right after school. Yeah. So the world was real to me. I grew up with homies in the hood that was like, that they didn't really go to Manhattan. Yeah. It could have been, Manhattan could have been China. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when I put these things in front of him and I put these things in front of kids, we, we did the Spotify event. They came and they seen all the things with, um, shout out to Mika at Spotify. Um, when we do these things, now that they get to touch them and it's tangible, they're like, oh yeah, this, this shit ain't really worlds away. I can, I can edit. I could, I could work in these places because they yeah. see people like me. Like, I go speak to schools all the time because I'm like, yo, bro, I, I, I love talking to kids. I, be, I grew up in East Flatbush. They'll be, like, they be like, oh, yeah, you know that pizza spot? I tell them. Because then they, their brain starts firing off like, oh, yeah, he really from he really there. really here. He's yeah, from yeah, there. Yeah. Oh, so if he could do it, they're going to look at me like, oh, he ain't nobody. I could yeah. get way past him. And I, and I want that. I encourage that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, you write. You, you got the tech now. You got yeah. the internet where you could be learning this stuff that I learned at 16 at 10. 10. Yeah, yeah. So I just, the, the one thing I, I, I really push to kids is like, I just want to make it feel real for them as much as I can because 
one, I feel like they're getting the tools much younger than we are, and I feel like they're going to lead progress because they have that. 100%. But all I want to do is make it real for them because yeah. someone made it real for me. You know what I'm saying? When I got to, when I was a kid in high school, going to Def Jam, putting up posters on the West Side Highway, putting up, giving out flyers at music in stores, the music industry was real for me in high school. Yeah. Like I saw, I saw Irv Gotti like, building Murder, Inc. Like, I see him walk the office. We weren't allowed to talk to them because we were kids and he was like, yo, street team dudes stay here. But like, I seen it. So it was real. You know my, what I'm saying? It's my real. Mind just, just like blew a little bit where I feel like, you know, as, as you've now moved into Dreamville, it's like where dreams can become realities. Yeah, bro. And like what you're describing is how it's now not about dreams. Mm -hmm. It's that this is possible. Yeah. Bro, I seen it There's in no more dreams. I, I, like I, all this stuff is possible now. I, I saw it. That's in, beautiful. I got to see it as a kid. Woo. I saw. I got to see Woo. it as a kid, so I knew that okay, it, it is possible. You know what I'm saying? Because I was one of the kids that got to be lucky. So then I think about a kid that I go, I go talk to. Um, I went to um, Ocean Hill Collegiate to speak to some kids, and I brought, I brought the vinyl, I brought the sneakers I made, and I'm talking to these kids at like eight in the morning, like yo, I did this, this, this. They're like yo, you you, you know J Cole? I'm like, I I do. Like, <laughs> I really do. Like, yeah, I've worked with him. I've done this stuff. It's like, and I'm like, yo, I'm from, I'm from, I grew up in the 40s in Brooklyn. And somebody in the class is like, oh, I live like right down there. I'm like, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yo, I made this. I show them the videos. I show them sitting in Egypt on a pyramid because I got to travel to Africa with him. And then their brains start firing like, bro, he's, he's from where I'm from. So that means there's no way I can't even, I can, I can do that too. But that's what I felt when I was a kid, when I saw... When Say Adams told me, like, yo, he had a poster in his wall. He's like, I made all these album covers. Go to school for that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember that day when he told me, because I wasn't even sure. And then, then I'm working on oh, off season. I'm working on Forest Hills Drive. I'm working on Revenge of the Dreamers. Somebody made it real for me. You know what I'm saying? So well, my, that I, art from East Flatbush could be this iconic thing that has now transcended the world. And you, you, it's, it's real. And it don't, it still feels weird to me. You know what I'm saying? Should. But I know Should. my thing is I have to tell, I got to tell like these kids because the ill thing of, that I look at them as when I look at kids younger than me, I'll be like, yo, y'all don't even realize y'all got it sold. The technology is way better than yeah. when I was there. And it's, it's reachable. The like access, when I think about like, is different. when I was spoiled as a kid, my dad and my mom do what they had to do. I had a computer. I was like one in like. Nobody had a computer. We had a computer. We had a Tandy. Uh, that was it called Tandy. They sold them at Radio Shack. Me, we had one. Shout out to Radio Shack. You, they ain't here anymore. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we had that, but that was really not aging a yourself. <laughs> yeah, and that wasn't a common thing. Yeah, yeah. So when I talk to these kids now, I'll be like, I'll be like, bro, like, y'all got an iPhone. You got, you got whatever like laptop you might have. The iPhone in itself is already the Android. That power is crazy. We didn't have that. We didn't have that. So like. Yeah. The thing that I do on top of it now is like, I just got to make it real for them. Like, yo, bro, I'm from, I grew up, I grew up on East 46th Street, Brooklyn, New York, East Flatbush. My family is from St. Mary, Jamaica. Y'all could, it's possible. Let me not say, I'm not going to tell you that it's, it's easy, but I'm saying like the things that I had, that I had to realize is I could look back in my life and I remember every door that I let close. But I remember the ones that I seen it was closing out and I jumped through it when it was closing because I was like, fuck that. And there's, there's so much power in what, what you're talking about, right? And I think it's, it's an important point because, you know, a lot of folks, we spend time talking about imagination, right? And dreaming and, and, and these things. But there's so much power in knowing that it is achievable, right? That it can come to fruition. Mm -hmm. It's not made up, mm -hmm. right? When we watch Disney, those things aren't real. Right, those are imaginative and that's beautiful, that's great. But coming from some of these communities, right, that, that we come from, to know that you can you can pull yourself, you can drive, you can actually achieve your way out of some of those circumstances to build different things to have this global impact, it's tangible. Like it's it's now real. So all that dreaming, all that ima imagination is real. And I think there's so much power in in that and what you're describing, what you're achieving, and then sharing that and passing that down to this next generation that has more tools than we have. But even with all the tools, 
if you don't believe that it can be possible yeah. or achieved, it doesn't matter. That's a fact. Right? And so we've given a lot of tools, a lot of things to folks, but we haven't taken the time to do what you're doing and your groups are doing of showing them that it's real. And that's why mentoring is so important. Like yeah, That's the utility of, of it all. Mm -hmm. I think about it all the time. I'd be like, if everybody that was doing whatever field you work in, if you mentored a little bit. Yeah. These kids will be fine because mm -hmm. a lot of times I think there's a, a huge disconnect with with kids and adults where there's like they don't they don't speak. Kids feel like the adults don't hear them. Adults feel like the kids don't hear them. But I feel like as adults, we just got to like even if we we just we just just show it to them, even in like passing, then they know that like, oh, if that's something they even want to do. Yeah. It's real. Like it's it's scary, bro. Like like. I think about like the dudes that made it real for me really young. Yeah. Like I've never forgotten them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Same. Like in same. when I when I when I sit down and I talk, I always say the same names. Yep. Because they made it real for me. Same. And I can't help it because like, bro, like without them, you know what I'm saying? This because it became it became possible, right? Like I think imagination is great. That's what we're talking about. But it's like when it became possible. Mm -hmm. For you, like, then you there was a real goal, mm -hmm. and you were going after. You weren't just like a big thinker, right? And crazy. It was like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm a big achiever. Yeah, and I that's, think that's different. My proof of concept is people like when I think about growing up. I think about when I when I see like Rob Love. Rob Love was like the dude I, I interned in the street team for. I remember like he was just like one of the coolest dudes I ever seen. Like I was young. I was like 16. This dude ran this whole promotions department. And I was just like, you know, he's black. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I'm like, damn. All right. I, I could kind of like this. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I, I'm seeing somebody that look like me, got a lot of power moving around. You know, I'm seeing Say, he doing all his creative stuff. And, I, and the world is just like, I'm like, oh. And who is this? Rob who? Rob Love. He ran, all yeah. the, he ran all the marketing at Def Jam when I was there. He was, the, he was my way in. And then from there, I met Say and I met Jennifer Hirsch and all these people all these different people at Def Jam, but like, it's just like when I think about that time, I'm just here admiring like, it's it's so crazy like people forget that stuff, man. You you, you forget that like, there is someone that always makes something real to you. I'm sure in, in whatever field you're in, like uh, it could be sports, it could be medicine and stuff. You see someone that's like, all right, if they could do it, I could either learn from them or I could do it like them or something. But someone actually showed you first. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. It's like it's like going to cooking school or Absolutely. or learning how to do something, learning how to ride a bike. You saw someone ride a bike, Absolutely. and then you like, all right. You can imitate, right? You can you can you you can see yourself in that, um, and I think representation matters, right? That's why we talk about that, and and I think your guys' representation matters, um, and, and I think what's so crazy for me as I as I look at it, and I'm like, you know, there's the there's the artists of Dreamville, but even above that is the culture, the lifestyle, the um, mentality of Dreamville, and and of of you that's transcending, right? And it's and it's not just you, right? It's all these amazing, you know, brothers and sisters that are um, adding to this, right? Or piling into Dreamville, and I think there's so much power in that. So when you think about the power of that you have and the power of Dreamville, how are you thinking about directing that? What are you looking to do with that? I'm looking what's, what's your dream now? Because you know it's all possible. So what's your dream of it? One, the biggest thing I think about is collaboration and highlighting like new talent. I feel like the the opportunities that we'll we'll embark on in the next few years is gonna be like really big but it's like what's what who are the people that we could bring in now to give a new perspective new lens on it so i'm always looking to work with like like new creatives yeah. in that space the next step is i think is like what are we going to do when we move into these these new verticals and and like really like create our ip in these spaces yeah. so that's that's what i'm excited about because the music is there like from the music standpoint our artists are producing some of the best music in the space, you know, facts, and that that part I feel like is sold. I, of course, we want them to be bigger 
and and the best and the most shining i feel like the, the, the music is there i feel like the next step is like what does the what do these new verticals look like and how do we solidify ourselves in those spaces and that's gonna be super exciting because it's all new it's like a new gold rush for yeah, us I, and, and i think that's the gold rush that's the new thing for right now right it's is you have all this influence right that can't be denied now no one no one can no one can argue or debate it right the influence of black culture of, of artistry of, of creativity has transcended beyond these areas right it's transcended beyond you know north carolina it's transcended beyond brooklyn right these are now it's global right you know i'm world i listen to the same music in iceland as i do in brooklyn world is flat great yeah. book you know so so when you look at that now because you are the um facilitator the galvanizer of this community of this culture where you choose to direct it and point it you have unbelievable power hmm. that i think it's hard for people to wrap their minds around because i think in the you know uh, in the days of the past it was the folks who created these um institutions right these gates right they created the highways right and then they put tolls on them right and so they charge people to be able to pass through it's an interesting leverage shift when you have people that have been able to organize communities and you guys have organized a community and actually it was you know uh president uh, obama he talked about that he wanted everybody to be an organizer because of the power in being able to organize groups mm -hmm. and move them in a direction Mm -hmm. And so when I hear about, you know, and, and, I, and I continuously learn about what you're doing and what, you know, your organization is doing, is you guys have organized all these people. And so now it's not just the music, it's what the music is doing to rally these audiences and then where you move those audiences. To me, you're, you're, not, a, you're not an artist group, you're an economic like impact engine. Because wherever you choose to point that or place it, you can change an entire city, state, region, country. Nearly 50,000 people, you know, Dreamville Fest in Raleigh. That's, and that's just a festival. And then it's when you look at how many people are, are downloading or buying music, it's millions. Mm -hmm. So you're taking now, you're able to point millions of people into a direction. Mm -hmm. That power is... That power is different. Mm -hmm. The value of that is different. It's far bigger than, than album sales or, or concert sales. You're able to change economies. Mm -hmm. And I think right now, the space is like, you know, I think as a company, what I'm proud of is how careful we are with, you know, how we, how we sway that, right? The responsibility. Where do we move that? Yeah. And I think that's why we're so careful with all the moves we make. This has been like, you know, something that has been, you know, a slow, a slow cook, like, and it's been, it's good that way. And it's like, it's funny. I felt like we were getting to that space like early 2020, like we were right there, you know, album was Grammy nominated, just yeah. the energy around all the talent, the whole IP. And then COVID was like, sit down, take a break. Yeah, and, but, but rebuild and come out with like a vengeance. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, this, this album that you, you know, you guys just put together with, with J. Cole is, um, Man, it's powerful. It was like, you know, with the with the launch. And I, I remember watching, you know, for, the first thing that kind of took over the media waves was, um, you know, J. Cole's going to play basketball in Rwanda. And I was like, okay, wow. Like, we know he's a basketball player. And then it was the freestyle on L.A. Leakers. And it was like, hip-hop is back. Mm -hmm. Right? And it was, and then it's like, boom. Then the album drops. And it's like. Your group, your organization, you guys created this tidal wave, this like momentum to dominate media. And to me, it was like, that shows just the power of it. I you mean, can be quiet for so long and then I control. Al I always say that he's, um, I, call, I call him the sleeping giant, right? And, I, and, and the illest thing I always remember that he said, like when we were on the last tour, he had this 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 uh, part during the show where he'd be like nothing overnight and he would go through like all the songs that got him here wow. and that always stood with me because I feel like that's Dreamville in a nutshell right this thing I could tell you from when we were doing Dial in the Dream shows in these small rooms to get into a festival of 50,000 people that this thing has been 
10,000 hours over 10,000 times. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. And people, people, you know, like, it's it's funny to watch because 10, I'm like... 10,000 hours, 10,000 times. And damn, it's a, it's a fact. <laughs> like, I, like I, I, I've saw it from the beginning and that's why I, I proudly wear how much I, like, I believe in the brand. And I Jay, believe- you need to use that as a line, by the way. <laughs> 10,000 hours, 10,000 times. I don't know, man. Shout out to Felton for that one. That was amazing. But hey, man, it's 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 something that I'm really proud of because it, it's to the point that even look, we we this is our first launch for the year, and it's like it's almost like we we're back to January before everything happened, because it's like yo, like didn't miss a beat. It's 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 important what we are trying to do as a, as a company because I feel like every artist that is under our roster, you could look at that person. And it's not a costume. Yeah. I feel like in 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 entertainment, a lot of people aren't the people that you see on camera. They're like another person after, which is fine. I'm. I don't think that it's a it's a negative thing. But one thing I feel like I feel like the reason why people gravitate to Dreamville as a brand so much, they can look in the brand and see things that represent themselves. And I feel like that's really important because a lot of times the problem with I think media in general is we're chasing these images that don't reflect us and we feel like we're not good enough. And I feel like the 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 thing that we represent is when you look in you there, you see yourself and you're happy with that and you're proud to represent it. And I think that's the thing that we keep getting back. Anyone who's seeing this, if you're someone that has a kid that's close proximity, whether it's your own or friends, make the world real to them and the possibilities that they can do because at the end of the day, that's the only way they'll know that they can overcome any circumstance that they're facing. I think kids don't hear that enough. And I feel like it could have been, I could have not been where I'm at easily that way. If I never took that, those art tests, like who knows? Like if, if I, honestly speaking, like really truthfully speaking, if that never happened in my life, you know, we think about the uh, butterfly effect of things. Absolutely, we wouldn't we wouldn't be here sitting probably. I'd probably have like some regular job, and you know, I my whole life could have been something else because I didn't come from a silver spoon. So like, you gotta you gotta like let these kids know that it's like it's possible. Like in a way, at least you know, open their minds to things. Take them outside the museums, ask them what they're into, and really just like show them even however you can. If you can't do it, and you know someone that can. Let that kid go to them, go with them to work one day and see something. You know what I'm saying? Some of these kids don't believe they could be doctors because they don't even know a doctor. Yeah, that looks you know like what I'm saying? Or like, you know what I'm saying? Shoot, if you somebody and you you go to see a physician, ask them like, hey, you know, I know a kid that might be interested in that. Do you mind if this kid can ask you like two questions? Like, we keep this stuff so close, and I I feel it's so unfair. I tell kids whatever they want to know. Well, thank you for sharing this, and I pray that they that they this gets seen yeah i mean at the end of the day you know we live on earth right absolutely we live on earth so at the end of the day like i don't know like they they use money here so at the end of the day i feel like we're in an exciting time as a company with everything going on and i'm just looking forward to the future and i appreciate you having me